Um, so my name is Rocio um, and um, I work for a company called Biotech. Uh, we just got acquired by um, a larger company called Agilent and um, I'm like a technical sales rep or a technical consultant for Biotech um, and it is more of a sales position um, and I never imagined myself to be in a sales position. Um, Whenever I um, I was in the lab, I, I thought sales reps were kind of, you know, the the door the door to door knocking uh, knocking on door to door selling vacuums kind of thing. Um, so I didn't know um, that this job existed until I attended something similar to um, what you all are doing now. Is you know, which is really amazing, is to be able to take a course like this and. Be able to be exposed to so many different career uh, career paths because everyone has a different path and there's so so many different options out there. So it's really great that you're getting all of this exposure to such a diversity of careers. Um, so I grew up in the Bay Area. Um, so I grew up in a little town called Brentwood, which is about an hour east of here. Um, I'm sure many of you have gone cherry picking or have eaten corn from Brentwood. Uh, it's a really small kind of farmer town. And um, I kind of always knew that I was interested in science. Um, I had, much like you guys, I had an awesome biology teacher in high school um, who really picked uh, my, uh, who really piqued my interest in bio and ended up taking AP bio, majoring in it in college. Um, and I originally really wanted to go into medicine. So I also worked at a nonprofit health clinic for about five years. I volunteered as a medical assistant and um, I got to room patients and take vitals, and it gave me a lot of exposure to what that career would look like. Um, and so I really wanted to be um, to be a doctor. Um, and I struggled a little bit in college. Um, I was working a lot. Um, San Francisco is a little expensive, and sometimes I didn't get the grades that I wanted. Um, so. You know, sometimes I'm like, oh, I got to be minus in that class. And so my GPA wasn't as high as I'd like it to be. It wasn't low by any means, but I figured I could do better. So I wanted to go and do a second bachelor's. I was also a little weak in chemistry. And um, to get into medical school, you need to be prepared to take the MCAT. And so it covers physics, biology, um, chemistry, as well as English. So I thought I could, uh, I thought doing a post back with some additional chemistry would be beneficial for me. Um, so I did that and I started working at a lab at UCSF at the same time. Um, and I was working a lot with microscopy and a lot of advanced microscopes and they're really fun to play with. They were some super resolution microscopes, some microscopes where, um, you know, it's, um, they're, it's called sim microscopy. So it's structured illum um, illumination microscopy where it's actually kind of using an algorithm to reconstruct an image. So I got to play around with some really cool stuff while I was there. Um, and then um, I um, simultaneously was applying to a master's program. Um, I really enjoyed research and I thought it was so fun. And um, I ended up getting a scholarship um, for the CERM program. Um, so the CIRM program is for regenerative medicine, and I've always kind of had this interest in stem cell biology. I remember being in about fourth grade, and that's when Dolly came out. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of Dolly, but it was like one of the first cloned uh, sheep, and I remember it was just such a big deal at the time, um, and that always kind of stuck with me um, as like the next new hot thing to be researching and I wanted to be a part of it. I really wanted to, um, um, you know, be involved in the development of that new science. So um, at the time, um, which might still be the case, UCSF was number one in the world for stem cell research. Um, so I thought it'd be an amazing opportunity. Um, I thought it'd give me some leverage in terms of uh, medicine. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot of doctors that work with different stem cell therapies. And so I thought that'd be a great way to kind of differentiate myself and, and it's something that I wanted to work with later as a physician as well. Um, and then, you know, I, things kind of changed during grad school. 
um, you know, for, I gosh, I don't know, 15 years, I wanted to be a doctor. And once I was in grad school, I decided that, you know, I kind of just didn't know if I wanted to do school anymore. I was kind of ready to get out into the, into the, you know, into the workforce. Um, it, I just kind of wanted to um, not be studying on weekends anymore at Starbucks. Um, and I wanted to kind of just be out there and, and be a part of the workforce. Um, so I actually started looking for other positions to see if it'd be something I'd be interested in. And medical school is a four-year commitment. And, you know, depending on what residency you do, it can be anywhere between three and 14 years. So um, I decided to give, um, like, to give sales a try and see if it's something I'd like. Someone came and give a pre gave a presentation, just kind of like the one that I'm giving now. And I realized that I didn't know what sales was or what it entailed. And, you know, the day-to-day -day of what it entailed actually really, um, it really appealed to me. It, it, I like to do different things all the time. I like to be uh, constantly challenged, um, learning. I like to meet people, but I also needed my downtime. I like to kind of just, you know, buckle down, like read a book and get to learn something. Um, so with this job, you know, I've been able to really do that. Um, I applied while I was in grad school. I got the interview and um, I got the job offer before I graduated, which was really great. So my last day at UCSF, I showed up with, um, with my luggage and um, I literally got on an Uber directly to SFO and flew out to start training for this position. Um, so it was, it was kind of nice to just kind of have that right after school. And, um, you know, my day to day, what it looks like uh, is very different um, depending on the month, um, you know, especially with COVID going on, everything's kind of up in the air. But before COVID, I would say I'd probably do two work from home days. So working from home isn't, isn't really too new for me. And I do three days out in the field. Um, so we don't have an office. So people in my position, because you're always attend, you're always going on site to a different, a uh, different place. You typically don't go into the office. Um, so I have a lot of um, accounts that I cover like Genentech, Novartis, UC Davis, UC Berkeley, um, you know, like 23andMe. Um, so a lot of the big companies, a lot of them have a lot of our instrumentation. So um, essentially I will come in and teach a scientist how to do a new assay. Um, like one of the most popular assays right now that you guys are probably aware of is the, is the ELISA assay for COVID. So that's been a very popular one. So, um, you know, we have liquid handling systems that help to do like the washing step in the ELISA. We have robotics that help stack, um, uh, stack tens of plates at a time um, so that, you know, a robot can kind of keep everything moving and make things a little bit faster and free up the hands of scientists so that they can do other things. Um, you know, we have like microscopy, things like that. So it's really interesting and everyone's science is very different. There's a lot of different companies. So you're kind of coming in and, you know, there's always gonna be a few different changes in the matrix in terms of, even if they are running in ELISA, there's gonna be some some differences in the plate type or um, um, like or, or the antigens that they're using, um, you know, or whether they wanna make a homemade ELISA, things like that. So you're you're helping people do different things based on different assays. Uh, we also carry a line of mic microscopes. So often people will want to do various things on a microscope, whether it's fluorescent imaging, bright field. Um, sometimes people need to keep their cell line alive and they can't, um, they don't want to sacrifice it. And in order to use uh, fluorescent dyes, you are, you, you know, you usually have to fix the cells, which means that you're killing them. Um, so we also do like label free cell counting. So you're using bright field and you're counting the cells, you're measuring growth rates. Um, you know, I had an opportunity to go up to like Sierra Nevada brewing. Um, they were measuring different yeasts for their beer strain and they wanted to pick the ones that were the most robust um, so that they can, you know, um, make better money, uh, make more beer, um, you know, and save time and money and energy by selecting strains that are going to be, um, you know, producing quality, um, um, quality beer. 
And um, so it's really interesting um, to get to know the Bay Area and get to know the breadth of science that people are working on. Um, you know, I've got to go into Memphis Meets, um, you know, and so the, the uh, like the Beyond Burger and things like that are very popular. Um, so I have to sign uh, non-disclosure um, agreements before I go in. So I, I can't share a lot of what I do there, but it's still really cool to be able to go in there, um, know enough of their science to be able to help them um, and then help get them streamlined for whatever little piece that they're looking for. Um, so in that sense, the job's been very interesting. Um, you know, in my master's, I would say, um, you know, you kind of get to know this one sub narrow, very specific subject, but you know it in very high detail, you become the expert on the subject. Um, and when you go into a role like mine, uh, you kind of become like a, a jack of all trades, master of none, for lack of a better term. But it's really cool because you're picking up um, a little bit of everything. Um, you know, I worked with a company that was um, where they were working to make um, like surf, uh, like surfboards from um, from algae. So all these algae were, um, you know, the purpose was to produce something that was gonna be like a different uh, like bioenergy resource, but they also produce a, by a byproduct that was used to make surfboards. So they were selling surfboards to help raise more capital and their ultimate scientific goal was to produce a cleaner source of fuel energy. So getting to know all of that is really cool. Um, and then, you know, for me, I'm, an extrovert slash introvert. Um, so I grew up, like I said, you know, in college, um, you know, uh, I would I was waitressing, I was bartending. Um, so I love talking to people, but after a whole weekend of talking to people, sometimes I was really grateful to be able to go into the library and not have anyone to talk to me, open a book, you know, study, do all my homework, um, or go into the lab and really like kind of, you know, start running all my experiments and assays. Um, and then after a few days of that, of not talking to anybody, I'd be ready to go out and talk to people again. And so I'd, I'd be so excited to go back to the bar and it kind of just became this yin and yang of my week. And I really became accustomed to it and I really liked it. And I found that this role has really helped me with that. Um, you know, the, the days where I'm on site and I'm helping scientists and I'm talking and I'm um, educating them on, on how this technology works and how, to, how it can further their science um, you know, I'm talking and I'm being social, so it's really nice. And then I have my, you know, usually two days where I get to work from home and, you know, kind of study up on another upcoming project where they want me to come in and bring something in or just come in and give a presentation. Um, so it's, it's a nice balance. Uh, you meet a lot of people um, and you'll come to learn if you end up, you know, staying in science and staying in the Bay Area that um, everything's kind of small. Uh, everyone knows each other, uh, the community is tiny. Um, so it's kind of cool. You'll get to see people that jump around from different companies or switch career paths, but um, be nice to everyone because you'll likely run into them um, in, in the future. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a little bit about me and how I got to this position um, and why I like it. Um, but if anyone would like to ask me any additional questions, um, I'm all ears. I think UCSF is, a, is an amazing community. Um, it's, a, it's really strong in terms of, you know, supporting science and also supporting, um, also just supporting, you know, people, um, diversity, and um, I think just the capability of people. Everyone there is very, um, Everyone is very strong, very independent um, and collaborative. I think the, the science that they put forward um, is just impressive. Um, what people are able to do with their collaborations um, and with all the tools that they have. Um, you know, UCSF has, has you know, really great funding. It's one of the top 10 ranking um, schools in various areas. Um, so I would say capability would be the biggest impression that it's made on me. My first degree was in biology um, and, you know, my primary reason for doing a post-bac program was to um, 
um, well, was one because I got offered an internship, um, kind of an inter internship in a lab position. I knew that being in the lab was really important for my career. And at USF, it's a really small school. Um, opportunities to work in the lab uh, were very limited um, and there weren't as many professors. It was a really, USF was a great school for me because it was like, it was small and I got a lot of attention from the professors. And I think that really helped me um, to do well. But in terms of picking a lab, um, you know, there's less professors, it's a smaller school. So there's less choice, um, less seats to get in. Um, and, you know, I just didn't even try to get into a lab. And I think I just realized that I needed it. I think I needed chemistry. Um, I wasn't as strong in it and I knew I needed to take the MCAT. So biology came first um, and I decided that I was going to do a, um, like a post back program and do a BS in biochemistry. So be it the biochemistry and the chemistry overlapped a lot. So it was an additional class. So it's not like I really got, you know, three bachelor degrees. It, it really is more like two. Um, but I do think that it was really monumental in terms of working in this position because understanding chemistry and understanding how everything's broken up into its basic essence, you can kind of figure out a problem. And that's the cool thing about chemistry is even if you didn't study, you can kind of boil things down to their essence and kind of build things up where, um, you know, in biology, you'd hear a lot like if you don't know the answer, you know, you kind of just don't know it. Um, and so that is kind of cool about chemistry is that you can just, you know, even as you started taking those upper division harder classes, um, like physical chemistry that involve, involved calculus and all of that, you just start thinking about atoms, um, like orbitals, things like that, how things fit together. And I will say it, it definitely helps me now when we run into issues and we don't know why something doesn't work. Uh, if I'm doing a demo on my instrumentation, um, you know, there's been a lot of times where you know, I'm thankful for my background, my additional background in physics and chemistry that it's helped me solve problems and help uh, my customers further their science. Um, so um, yeah, being able to boil things down like that has definitely been uh, beneficial. SF State has a lot, just because it's such a big school, there's so many science professors. Uh, and you know, all of these professors you know, I think 98% of them have their PhDs, um, you know, and, and postdocs. Um, so they've all worked in a variety of labs. And like I said before, when you're getting your PhD, you're becoming a doctor in that subject. So you're the expert. So you have this huge team of experts in their field. Um, and you kind of, you can go work in their lab and, you know, within the realm of their field, kind of choose something directed. Like if you wanted to go and work for um, you know someone that does you know metabolism. You could say I want to look at how you know mice burn brown fat versus yellow fat. Um, so you get to kind of pick something like specific under their realm. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different programs that they have. They have a, so many great professors. Um, um, you know, every went to people that went to great schools, had great walks of life. Um, there's so much diversity there. So, yes. Um, so USF is a small, um, a small Catholic Jesuit school. Um, so my upper division classes were no more than 12 people. So in that regard, it was great. Um, I think I was a little bit, coming from a small town to a big city, I think I was a little intimidated. Um, I needed a little bit more handholding. And I think going to a college like USF was a great, um, it was kind of like a great buffer place for me to be and kind of be able to be comfortable and get to know the city a little bit more before I completely you know, went on to do, uh, went on to go to something like SF State or UCSF. Um, so the program was awesome. All the professors know you. If I was two minutes late, um, you know, like twice, you know, my professor would send me an email and tell me not to be late. So it was really great in that regard where, um, you know, professors kind of could be harder on me. Um, but it's great because you want to be challenged. You want them to be hard on you. You're paying a lot of money to go to school. So, you know, it's nice that they're making sure that you're getting the best education, the best training, the best discipline that you can get. Um, SF State's much bigger. 
Um, I could probably skip class <laughs> for weeks, um, even though I, I never I never did, and nor would I recommend that. Um, you know, before people, before a professor really found out. Um, so it's one of those situations when you're picking a small school versus a bigger school to understand what kind of environment you thrive in. Do you need a little bit more handholding? Do you need someone that's going to hold you accountable? Or are you fine? Um, you know, can you, are you okay to work in a big environment like that where there's a class of 500 people um, and you're, you know, showing up to class, taking notes, um, things like that. I think a lot of times they're taping classes now. I mean, especially with with COVID and everything going on. Um, so, you know, I think that for me, um, school size was, school size and location was probably the two most important things for me looking at a college. Um, and so you kind of have to know yourself and know what you think the best environment for you to do well would be. Uh, probably too many. I wasn't very efficient. Um, so my parents didn't go to college and I didn't really have, um, so I didn't really have like kind of like a mentorship program there. I really had to seek out mentors at school. Um, so I did, you know, I did USF and then I went on and did my, um, my second slash third bachelor uh, degree. So I did the, so I was kind of doing it not, I was full time, but I kind of stretched out my schooling a lot so that I could work and also work in the lab. Um, so I would probably say <laughs> 11 years, I think, after high school, uh, which I do not recommend, um, you know. Um, but I mean, obviously, if you want to go do a PhD, you're looking anywhere between, you know, four to six years on average. If you want to do a postdoc, it's going to be anywhere between two and five years on average. Um, so don't let the time scare you. Um, I would just say definitely get a lot of mentorship and find someone that you can really trust. Um, you're not going to get a professor that just says, hey, you, I want to mentor you. You, yeah, you seem like you need it. You actually need to really actively form those relationships with your professors, with your peers. Um, you know, you should say uh, with your advisors, like you should say, hey, look, this is my two, three, five, seven year plan. Um, how does that look to you? Um, get as much feedback as you can from people. Um, you want to try to be efficient, but at the same time, you shouldn't let the time of what something's going to take scare you. The time's going to pass anyway, so pick something that you really love doing. Um, and I, yeah, and I can't stress it enough. I had, you know, I started collecting uh, mentorship kind of late, where I should have really been reaching out as early as high school, as early as my first undergrad experience. And I don't think I started doing that until I realized um, that I wanted to go into my second, um, second slash third bachelor. So that would be the biggest take home. I think I miss having, um, I'm still helping people. So I, I feel good when I go into a lab. I, or when I'm teaching people how to use COVID instruments or, you know, when I'm placing in robotics and, you know, a lab that wouldn't be able to run as many COVID tests and now they're being, now they can run 2000 samples a day. So there's still that feeling of you're helping, you're helping society move forward. Um, I kind of miss being the master of my own project and my own, my own experiment sometimes you know, I wonder like, oh, I wonder, you know, how that student that took over my, that took over uh, my project is doing, like what else have they found out? Um, so I miss that. Um, I miss being on, like in the loop with current, uh, with current like scientific findings. So, you know, at UCSF, you always, um, you know, within your own program, you always attend a lot of seminars. So I was in this stem cell biology program. So there's people that go in and, you know, they talk about your gut health. So they will be like um, how stem cells are, you know, are in your, um, are in your intestine. And so you find out like, oh my gosh, your intestine's so smart. It's kind of, you know, they're, they're kind of looking at it as like the new brain of the body. Um, so you get to find out all these new cool things that people are working on. Um, and a lot of this data hasn't been published yet because it's a lot of PhD students and postdocs that are giving presentations. Um, so, you know, I think being so close with your finger on the pulse and knowing all of the new things that are being uncovered is like, the, is pretty exciting. 
Um, Cause then, and it also gives you ideas for your own for your own assays and experiments, because with biology, you'll come to know that there's a lot of, you're, you come to find out that there's a lot of um, like similar mechanisms. So if something, you know, works like this in muscle, like maybe it works like that in the brain system or it's totally different. So um, you can kind of compare other people's uh, research with your own and kind of get ideas of how to expand your own. So I would say that's the one thing I missed is, yeah, it's like you, you're so up to date on all the novel things that everyone's doing. Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of people do, um, will kind of collect cells. Like if I wanted to image a few cells, um, you know, they'll, they'll stain them. So you'll be able to stain for a certain protein. Um, and you have to kill the cells to do this. Um, so with flow cytometry, you can have kind of like, um, like hypothetically, I would have like a mouse and maybe all of, you know, I'm looking for this one mouse that has, like I worked on something that's called like Pax3 stem cells. Um, so they're like a rare type of uh, muscle stem cells. So we created these, we engineered these mice that would express it with GFP. So uh, when you run something through flow, it's kind of like, an, uh, like an, a machine that works via elimination. So you harvest these cells from mice and then you'll run them into this instrument and the instrument will like shoot out one cell at a time. And it will, you kind of like program questions like, is this a skin cell or is it a muscle cell? And if it's a skin cell, we don't want it. So it throws it in the trash. And if it is a muscle cell, it'll keep it. And then, so you kind of usually, we call those gating events. And so usually there's like seven questions like that um, so that you can get the cells that you want by process of elimination. So at the end, I would just have this file with all of these muscle stem cells that I wanted and I wanted to go work, uh, wanted to work with. Um, so it's really expensive. It takes a long time, um, but it's really clean um, and it's really accurate. Um, and, it's, um, and it's really cool. And it's one of those things that's becoming a really valuable tool in, um, in science. So if you can get your hands on uh, flow cytometry, definitely do it. I think it's valuable. Um, and that's one thing that's really cool too about all my different lab experiences. Um, even though I wasn't efficient and you know, I was in different labs and in school, um, you know, I'm doing really well in my job now. Um, you know, I'm like top five in my company and I'm the newest person there. And it's because I've had so much diverse lab experiences. You know, I've worked with so many different instruments um, that I can kind of talk to all the scientists and I don't need to know their science that well. Like I just need to know what their goals are and it makes it really easy to help people. So, um, you know, if you do decide to go in science, definitely um, like always say yes when someone wants to teach you how to, you know, do a new assay or work on a new um, instrument. Um, it's definitely fun and it helps to ingrain the science in your head.